Hello, my name is Corey Barlog, director of God of War. And if you have not played God of War, spoilers abound. Go away. Come back after you finish playing, and then I'll give you a little insight on how we made the game. All right. So here we are at the start of God of War. Uh, this opening sequence actually came about a little late. We knew the, the opening level, but the opening sequence of Kratos at the tree and kind of having the quiet, solemn moment was a lot of discussion for us to figure out, you know, the right moment to start this game. And it needed to be not a big, bombastic action moment to really uh, show people that things are different. We needed to show them that, you know, Kratos has a little bit more going on in this game than any of the previous games. And it was important that you actually use the button to chop the tree down. Uh, another thing, you know, spoilers, uh, the chopping of this tree down is... Uh, Kratos' wife, Faye, she had selected these trees, and these trees are very specific in the, the stave, the magical stave that is protecting their forest. She knew cutting this tree down would make them exposed to the entire Norse pantheon, to everyone on the outer world, and that was her way of saying that, you know, Kratos sometimes likes to procrastinate, and given the opportunity, he's going to just stall as much as possible and he's unaware of this which is why he even tells his son you know you're not ready this moment like this is really cool I, I really wanted more of these kinds of moments throughout the game the theme of the wounds that will not heal so these burn marks on his forearms uh, have not healed since they were seared on his forearms all the way back in the first awesome. God of War game now he's even unable to get in the boat show boy. his son just the wrapping of that which is you know wordlessly explaining so much of this relationship between these two characters and I said this before but I mean I was this is such a, a, a blatant inspiration from Mando you know, that, when I was a kid watching that movie and seeing Arnold carry this giant tree and the first tree that they gave me was really small and normal sized, you know? And I kept saying bigger and bigger and bigger. And I wanted to go even bigger than this, but at that point, I think they cut me off and kicked me out of the office and said, we're just not going to listen to you Still anymore. Want me to tie to um, the boat? But I, was, I, I wanted it to feel like, you know, the, there's Arnold carrying a tree, but then there's, you know, Kratos carrying just, just massive tree. And, of course, his son completely unfazed, right? Because he doesn't know anything more than just dad is dad, right? He's always been strong. No big deal. I like the, the, the slowness of all of this, just kind of that is enough. doing very everyday things, chopping a tree down, lashing it to a boat, you know, going down the river, but still giving you those sort of quiet, softer moments that help build towards what this eventually will Father? become. What? Did something change? The forest feels different now. Yeah. Everything is different, boy. And this this line. To dwell on it. So yes, sir. So much weight behind this line. This is like that line at the beginning of Iron Man 2 when Don Cheadle is a uh, war machine and he pretty much just said, what are you doing here? I'm here to deal with it. Let's move on. That line is all about that sense that everything has changed. It's a communication to Atreus as much as it is to the audience. It's, everything's different. Try not to dwell on it. Take in the experience. Roll with us on this ride. Danielle Basuti. Oh, so brilliant as the witch in the woods or Freya. Spoilers. And here, very important that this is the moment of quiet. There is no music. It is the sounds of their feet crunching against the, the, the leaves as they walk up in silence, right? This is, neither of them really knows how to relate to each other. This is the slightly uncomfortable silent moments as you're slowly beginning to understand that something else is going on. And if you've never played before, you still are wondering, like, okay, so what is happening? If you've not experienced any spoilers from the internet, it is a surprise when you first see Atreus walk through the door and see what really is going on. That was the last. 
Then he just goes and tears this tree up. In a few minutes, the whole thing is broken down. See? Gods can chop wood fast. Oh, I love this little breath. He's just stealing himself before he walks in. So much of, you know, what we had done is, is being open on the set to try to figure out Where what works I best. See? And this sort of abbreviation of the, the Viking oh, prayer for the dead see, was added on the set when I was just like, uh, I don't really want him to do the whole poem because we're taking place in the time before the Viking. So oh, I'm imagining this Call is kind of me. the straw henge to the stone henge version of that full poem. And really all he's doing is... is calling out to his mother and his father as she's being ushered off. He's laying down mistletoe. Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. We had a bug for the longest time where in the middle of this sequence, the model would just jitter a little bit so everybody would be like, she's not dead. She's ready. And this part coming up is so beautiful. Ivor's music is just astounding. I mean, Bear did an amazing job on this score. This moment, the first time he gave me the first draft of the score, and we put it to the rough animatic of this. You know, Kratos' is sort of true desires right here. Your way home. You're free. You are free. That's all he wants. Like, she got what he could never get. It's interesting because we didn't do a lot of modifications on this. Once we had done our pre-visualization of this scene, it ended up being almost exactly as we first realized it. The only changes were getting the camera to work really well over the fires. That was the big trick. Like orchestrating all the complex camera moves with these big objects all over the set was definitely one of our biggest challenges. And then also not feeling like you're getting dizzy from moving the camera back and forth and back and forth. The initial previews we did was a lot longer and we kind of, before we got on the set, started cutting it down. Uh, it was definitely a part of me that felt like maybe this was a little too fast, but... I think it ended up working overall for the pacing, but I really wanted the fires to burn for a little bit longer, the knife could heat up, and then he grabs it, but I think it still works. I love this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He apologizes for getting burned. And then this just squeeze. Simple. Put the, sun, the snow in his hand. And a piece of Kratos. This knife. At the beginning of this journey, a piece of his father, a piece of the, the memories. Uh, the, the wounds that never heal are on his hand. He's carrying that throughout. And a piece of his father and a piece of his mother. She thought you thought. She knew. Shall we? Now? now? I love his reaction there. such an amazing work by our cinematics team to be able to really catch so many of these moments. A lot of weird choreography had to go on, but what are we hunting? so you worth it. Hunting deer. And the lighting here is just absolutely beautiful. Which way? It did not come in online until the very deer. end. You know, the artist actually came in okay. to this uh, level and told me, oh, way. I'd like to redo a few things. You know, we're in the last six months of the game. And I thought, oh, okay, cool, we'll do redo a couple of rocks or change some textures or even adjust the lighting a little bit. And, and then a producer runs in my office like three or four oh, weeks later yelling at me. Why, are we doing uh, this why did you tell them to redo I the whole level? And I was like, I, I, what are you talking about? And, and they just, the they weren't satisfied Depends with it, you. so they went in and they really just Hunt. redid everything. And it's for the better. That's the level of kind of perfectionism that everybody has at the studio, that a level that was done. Uh, that that I was like pretty happy with, and I gave them you know thumbs up and said let's let's this is good let's move forward, 
And uh, they just were not what happy. Did you find? They wanted to take Tracks. it even further. And not dear, though. I feel like that's reflected in every aspect looking. of the game. Everybody's desire to go one step beyond what we think is like, okay, well, that's done. Alright, well that is the opening of God of War, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to give you a little bit of insight on what it was to develop this game. PlayStation.